I want to thank everyone for coming today to this bill signing ceremony where we're going to be signing three bills. Bill 42, which is a bill that pertains to sitting and lying on sidewalks in our commercial district at Waikiki. Bill 43 that deals with urination and defecation in the commercial districts of Waikiki, commercial district of Waikiki. And then Bill 46, which deals with urination and defecation island-wide on the entire island of Oahu. Um, these bills are significant bills in the step forward of dealing uh, with the evolving and, and changing issue of homeless on our streets and also um, how we make sure that our community is safe in terms of health and safety and also open and free for everyone to use our sidewalks. We wouldn't have been here today without the help of many of the people standing behind me. Of course, our council members, uh, Stanley Chang and Ikaika Anderson, stepped forward to help us with this, along with other council members who are not here today. And our partners in Waikiki also worked very hard, and we have a good representation of them today, and they'll be talking. Waikiki is our growth engine for the state of Hawaii. We all know that. Um, it generates the bulk of our, our, of our revenue that helps us live better not only on this island, but throughout the state. And it's also a place that residents love deeply. Everyone in this room goes to Waikiki to surf, um, to enjoy the great outdoors, to go to great meals, great entertainment. And that's important for all of us. We also have a large residential community in Waikiki. 50 some odd thousand people live there. And for all of us who go to Waikiki, we see that community out and about walking and enjoying life, and they care about their neighborhood, and it is a true neighborhood. So how do we deal with this issue that we face today? And I repeatedly say it is with compassion, great compassion. And I particularly like what, what Council Member Ikaika Anderson says repeatedly when he talks about this issue. And he believes, and he's going to say it today, I'm sure, that being compassionate means trying to help those who are on our sidewalks and in our streets. And the way the situation is today, where we walk by someone who's passed out in the middle of a sidewalk or sitting there and not able to move very well and either step over them or stumble over them or hurriedly walk around them and, and give them a side look that's you know, not so friendly, that is not compassionate. I believe that is not how we treat people. And we need to figure out a way to address this issue. And part of it is what I call compassionate disruption. A little bit of tough love. And these bills are saying that number one, our sidewalks in our great district of Waikiki are made to traverse on, to walk on, to stroll on, to enjoy the great outdoors, to celebrate life together. They were not built for someone to lie down on and go to sleep four hours on end or to sit down and take over a space on a sidewalk where people are walking by. They were designed to diverse on or to walk on. They were designed for that. Secondly, urinating and defecating in places other than bathrooms creates a major health hazard for our residents and our visitors. And we have a major problem in that area in Waikiki. It is not safe, it is not healthy, and something needs to be done about it for everyone including our workers. You know, we, I go to our park and rec personnel on a regular basis, the Waikiki, the guys in the blue shirts, the women in the blue shirts. Many times they're sweating profusely, like on a day like this, cleaning up our parks repeatedly, and they have to pick up poop. And one lady from Kalihi said, boss, when I signed up for this job, I didn't know I was gonna have to pick up human feces as part of this job, and she's wearing one of those white gloves like the doctors wear. That really shouldn't have to happen. So these bills are about giving us tools and instruments to address this problem and to try to make us a better community. And I believe this is a step in that direction, all of us working together. When these bills go into effect, we're not going to immediately come down hard on people. We are going to want to educate them first. We want them to change how they act so that no other further action needs to be taken. And so, for example, sit lie. In the bill itself, it says that you must first warn. I like that, because a warning is a form of education, saying we got this new law, it's taken, goes into effect upon my signature, and we're letting you know that your actions need to change, and we're giving you this warning, and that will go on for a while. 
At some point, when there's actual enforcement, they will warn first. And then they'll come back and say, we've warned you, you haven't gotten up, we're gonna cite you. And it's one of those tickets that we all have seen at one point or another in our lives. And they will be cited. It's a piece of paper. They continue to sit or lie on a sidewalk. They will then, as a, as a next level of action, be arrested. And they will no longer be sitting or lying on our sidewalk. And while I hope we don't have to do that, that, in the end of the day, is the actual teeth to try to get a changed action. And we want a changed action. Now, people are going to say, for the sit lie, where are they going to go? And I have asked, I've asked our guys here at the city, Jun Yang, our housing person, to find out how many spaces, shelter spaces, there are available right now in urban Honolulu for people to stay in. Right now, we have about 88 homeless persons in Waikiki, where this bill applies. This bill applies to the commercial area, which is basically on the inside of the Alawai Canal, all the way to Kapuhulu Avenue, where the zoo is. So the dense urban commercial area. About 88 folks reside there, the bulk of them men. Last night, we had 47 shelters for men in urban Honolulu for folks to go into. Now, maybe they don't want to go into the shelters, because there's rules. But we have rules about our sidewalks now, and we're going to enforce those rules. And I believe that a shelter space is better than staying on our sidewalks. We had, in the past year, seven homeless people murdered on our streets and sidewalks on Oahu. Seven. It is dangerous on those streets. No one has been harmed physically, or murdered in any shelter, as far as I know, ever. And I believe that is a better place to go than to stay on our streets. On average, over the last six months, we have approximately 80 spaces available for men in the urban core. So the argument that they have nowhere to go, there is a place to go. It may not be a place they want to go, but it's a place that they can go to, get a meal, take a shower, have a roof over their head, get a blanket, and sleep safely for the night. And I, we believe, I believe, it's a better place to go than to stay on our sidewalks, which will not permit in the Waikiki area. I wanted to emphasize one other thing. So urination defecation, I'm signing two bills, one for Waikiki and one island-wide. In Waikiki, thanks to the hard work of the Waikiki Business Improvement District and our council, we have a bathroom that was open 24-7 starting last night. We have three Kuhio bathrooms. The first one over by the police station, you know where that is, the substation, was opened. 76 people used it between the closing time, otherwise closing time at 10 to what, 5.30, John? 10.30. 10.30 to? 6.30. 10 to 6.30. 76 people used it. That's good. I like those statistics. It shows people are using the bathroom. And by the way, if they weren't using the bathroom there, the question is, where were they using the bathroom? And that's the, that's the good news. And we want to thank um, the WBID for stepping forward. They actually are monitoring this. They're going to study it to see does this work, because if it works, we're going to look to expand it. There is a security camera not inside the bathroom, but outside the bathroom to also monitor what's going on. We want to make sure it's safe. We like the fact the bathroom is right next to the police substation, and those are good things. One other thing, and then I'm going to turn it over to the other folks. Some may wonder, OK, well, the police are out there first warning people and then citing them and finally arresting them. We are hoping the police officers are going to be walking with this card. It's small, it's folded, they will have it. So when they go up and warn someone that, guys, you cannot lie or sit here anymore, they will give them this card which tells them where they can go. And it's numbers, and this is a blow-up version of the same. And it has numbers like IHS, Next Step, Waikiki Health Center. If a person says, okay, I no longer want to stay on this sidewalk, lie or sleep on this sidewalk anymore, I'm willing to go into a shelter, they can call this number. If they are not able to call this number, the police officer will call this number for them and arrange for someone to come and get them to take them into a shelter. So I believe they do have choice if they have the will. And I believe this law, the sit-lie law, 
hopefully will give more of these individuals the will to go into a shelter where they can be safer than on our street. With that, I'd like to turn it over, I think, maybe first to Major Mann, who will be the, who's the major, who is, he heads up our team. A strong woman who takes her job very seriously, including making sure that everyone is treated fairly. So Major Mann. Thank you. Thank you. I'm acting major, but thank you, Mayor, for the promotion. I promoted it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just um, very quickly, what we want to say is now that the um, bill has become law, we want to focus our efforts on education and then begin enforcement um, with the hope that people will voluntarily comply. And we do believe that the majority of them will. And we're also going to take the opportunity while we're educating to present the information, as the mayor had stated, to these individuals. So if they do want to go to a shelter, they will have the information, and hopefully we can make it happen for them. Thank you, Major Man. Really, mm -hmm. really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, and we'll be open to questions afterwards on, the, on this issue after we sign the bills, but we'd like Paul Kosasa, who is the, you know, ABC stores, he's the man, but also he's chairman of the Waikiki Business Improvement District. So Thank you, Mayor. Thanks. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, as I want to emphasize that uh, the uh, Waik Waikiki Business Improvement uh, District couldn't have done it alone. We worked in close partnership with the mayor's office and the city council in providing the 24-hour restroom opening. Uh, as uh, Ikaika has uh, uh, stated so aptly, that it is compassion, and it was our goal with the visitor industry. And we're stepping up to the plate and making sure that we can have a place for our visitors, residents, and homeless to be able to use the restroom facilities. Um, as the mayor had stated, there were 76 people that used it. It was a mixture of um, uh, visitors, residents, and homeless. There were no incidents. Uh, so knock on wood, we will hope that uh, will continue. Thank you. Okay. Um, Jan Imani is the is day-to-day the -day person at WBID. Would you want to report from the first night the condition of the bathroom afterwards and how did it look since you followed up? You're concerned, right? <laughs> cleanliness, and cleanliness. Actually, the Department of Parks and Recreation personnel did their uh, regular cleaning at 6.30 this morning and they reported that uh, you know everything was in order. There were no incidents of vandalism or uh, such. Thank you, Jan. Okay. George Segetti. You know, he leads the, the efforts in Waikiki. We're grateful that he's, he's on board and Thank makes you. a big difference there. Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to be here. Thank you very much. I want to take the opportunity on behalf of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association. I want to thank really the city council. I want to thank the mayor and his team. I want to thank WBID and all the constituents that have come together in a collaborative work together in, in, in tackling this very complex issue. I want to speak on behalf of the, the, the daily average of about 90,000 visitors come into Waikiki, the 50,000 plus employees. This really addresses the health and safety that's so, so important to all of them. So this is a, certainly a step in the right direction and I want to thank everybody for doing this. Thank you. Thanks, Paolo. George. Thank you. Rick Egan, head of the Improvement Association. Thank you, Mayor and members of the Council, Kekai Anderson and our City Council member, Stanley Chang. Uh, certainly this was a, a partnership of everyone working together to try, try to, cr to solve what has become the number one problem for the visitor industry today. It's the number one source of complaints from our guests. Uh, not a day goes by you know, when we don't get a concern that, that basically the, the Waikiki that we, have all, we all love is being destroyed by uh, the conditions on the street. The passage of these two, actually three bills, but two that apply to Waikiki, uh, will basically enable us to, to gain back control of the sidewalks, make sure that they stay clean, stay sanitary, uh, that our visitors uh, feel comfortable and safe. And I believe that in the, in, uh, as this issue re evolves, it's going to be better for everyone involved, including our homeless who uh, uh, need and deserve to more attention than being left on the sidewalks. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Stanley Chang, who is a council member who represents Waikiki, whose birthday was listed last Saturday. So how old are you now? 18. <laughs> <laughs> old enough to know that we shouldn't be sitting down or lying down. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I want to, um, as a council member representing Waikiki, you know, Waikiki is only about half of 1% of the land area of the city and county of Honolulu, but what an important one half of 1% it is. 
It is a center of our visitor industry with tens of thousands of visitors every single day of employees. It's also home to tens of thousands of residents and welcomes Kama Aina every single day to work and to play. And we are saying today that in this extremely important area of the city and county that these sidewalks are extremely congested. They're very important to all who use them. They're intended for the transportation of the public and that they are not good places to sit down, to lie down, to urinate, or to defecate. These are public health and safety issues. And by taking this step today, we are going to be ensuring that we're going to have as clean and safe a Waikiki as possible for our visitors and for our residents alike. And this would not be possible without the cooperation of the private sector, who has um, been extremely generous in uh, a novel public-private partnership to help keep our restrooms in Waikiki open for 24 hours a day. And so I wanted to thank all of the businesses in Waikiki for voluntarily coming up with the funds to help make our streets and our sidewalks safe and clean. I finally want to thank the mayor for personally being involved in such an important uh, neighborhood and aspect of our economy because for years, as we've heard, um, Waikiki has been crying out for help and today help is on the way thanks to the efforts of this administration and this mayor and the private sector. Thank you. Thanks. Before I introduce Ikaika Anderson, I wanted to say a few words about Ikaika. These bills that I'm signing today would not be on my desk to sign without Ikaika moving them forward. As you know, they're highly controversial. He went through hours of hearings and heard from all kinds of folks. And I want to thank Ikaika for doing so. And I know he's very passionate about this issue. He wanted to see what we're doing in Waikiki apply to the entire island of, Hawaii, uh, island of Oahu. And I have to say, I wish I could too, because many of our districts, our neighborhoods, suffer the same kinds of things that Waikiki does. But we also live in a world of legal challenges, and we wanted to make sure we had a bill that was specific to commercial areas that we could then defend if we're challenged or when we're challenged. Um, the good news is that there is another bill that's moving forward that will apply to other commercial districts. And I believe that will bring great relief to areas like Chinatown, Kaimuki, and I think he may be adding other areas as we go forward around this island where we have defined commercial districts. So I wanted to thank Ikaika for that, and I wanted to thank him for moving forward the island-wide urination and defecation bill, because initially, our initial legal research was saying we could not probably withstand constitutional scrutiny. As we dug further with Ikaika's request, saying, Mayor, can you please make sure we have actually done the research and believe that we can stand behind this bill because it's a health and safety issue, and we do have restrooms around this island. So I want to thank Ikaika. I want to turn over to Ikaika. Really appreciate your giving us the chance to work on these bills and, and you. put them into place. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. As the mayor mentioned earlier, our sidewalks were built for people to walk from point A to point B. They are not called side sits, they are not called side lies, they are called sidewalks for that particular reason. Uh, I'd also like to state that I'm very pleased that our sidewalks will once again be returned in Waikiki to all of the people of the city and county of Honolulu as well as our visitors. As was mentioned, we are going to have shelter space that is available for people who are occupying our sidewalks to go to. No one, no one has the right to permanently occupy public space, public sidewalks or other public space on a permanent basis to the detriment of the general public. As the mayor mentioned, we are going to be distributing these cards to those people who we ask to move. And for those folks who decide not to move, they are gonna be choosing at their own choice to be subject to the bills that the mayor is gonna be signing today. Now some folks may argue that these bills are cruel. If we look at some of the statistics of the violence that has occurred on our streets in our homeless community over the past year, I would argue it is much more incompassionate to leave people on the streets in place than to pick them up and to take them to a shelter. Yeah. As we can see here, there have been a number of murders, there have been a number of beatings, stabbings, serious injuries that have occurred amongst our homeless population on our streets. I think Gordon wrote most of those stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would argue that it would be much more compassionate for Major Mann and her team to issue a warning 
and ask folks if they would like to be removed from the sidewalk voluntarily, taken to a shelter, offered a warm cup of soup, a blanket, a bed, and a roof over their head, not only to save them from the elements, but also from the violence on the streets. In dealing with the public urination defecation issue, that is an issue of serious uh, sanitation concerns on our streets. And I'm also very pleased that we were able to pass uh, a measure not only for Waikiki, but island-wide in an attempt to tackle this very important issue. I'd also like to thank all of my colleagues on the Honolulu City Council, particularly the Waikiki Council member, Stanley Chang, for working with us, the business community, for continuously working with the Honolulu City Council, as well as Mayor Kirk Caldwell, Managing Director Ember Shin, and the Mayor's team. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank this you, is truly a partnership. Thank, thank you. you. I'm thinking. I think it would be, Jesse, before we sign, maybe we'll take questions. Yeah. And then we don't have to. Yeah. So we'll take questions. We like to do it taking it to these bills we're talking about. If there's other issues and questions you want to talk about, if we'll stick around afterwards and do it on the side, if that's all right. Keep the focus with these guys here, and then they can go home. Some, not home, back to work. Some of these guys got big jobs they got to do. But that's okay with all of you. So we'll open we'll up the questions to anyone standing here on Bill 42, 43, or 46. I just wanted to clarify, um, Councilman Emerson, you just mentioned the fact that people will be offered rides to these support services or shelters. So upon encountering an individual who's either sitting or lying on the sidewalk or perhaps urinating or defecating in a public place, they'll be approached by a police officer who will then do what? From what we heard from the major, they'll be approached, offered uh, one of these yellow placards that have a number that they can call and a service provider will come out and will assess them and will offer services to them. Part of those services that we understand will be offered is the opportunity to go into a shelter from whichever agency that the representative is coming out from. So to clarify, they won't be provided a ride by that officer? I believe what will happen is someone from the shelter will be coming out and assessing. Um, right. The major can clarify that. Maybe you want to clarify it if there's any confusion, but the police officer is not going to drive no. the, the individual to a shelter, but in many cases, shelter providers will come out with a van if people want to move into and take them into shelter. So it's calling the shelter provider and bring them, but you may want to have And since you're already up here, um, can you speak to what this means for just manpower in terms of what we know are already a lot of responsibilities on the plates of our officers? We are responding to numerous calls a day addressing complaints from both the public and private sector with people sitting and laying on the sidewalk. So really, for us to start uh, enforcing and warning, it's not going to require much more effort on our part, especially if people comply voluntarily. Thanks, Major. Acting Major, I have a quick follow-up. Um, uh, I uh, talked to the uh, PIO at, at HPD, and they say that uh, the officers can't even issue a citation right now today because the, the ordinance number hasn't been worked out with the citation. When do you expect that to be worked out and officers actually have the ability to issue a citation? Actually, I can answer that question. Once it's sent over and we have a, a section that we can apply is when we'll start applying it. But it is a revised ordinance that we will physically write into the citations. So it shouldn't be too long. So you don't have to print a new citation. No. You just write it in. We will, upon signing, get that, that, that number and get it over to, to uh, Acting Major Matt. Mayor, as you know, uh, this, this uh, bill is modeled, uh, these bills are modeled after the sit uh, law in Seattle that was enacted in 93. I spoke to a, uh, a Seattle PIO uh, by phone this morning, and they said that the, the bill has uh, very little controversy now, 11 years later, and that it, it's worked to move people off the sidewalk. They issue a $24 citation if you don't you know, listen to the officer's order. Do you imagine that down the line that th this controversy will, will uh, subside and that uh, everything will work itself out? That's what we believe, and that's why we model it after that law. I like what you're saying. I'd like you to come stand on this side of the table <laughs> and repeat that for all of us. But no, it, we just have you discovered in our research, you know, we put a lot of time into this. Um, we looked around the country at what laws worked best, what was most effective. We don't want to do something just to be cruel. We want to do something that's going to change act, people's actions and make a difference. And we saw how it worked in Seattle. We heard much of what you just said. And we're hopeful, and I think if we do this correctly, we'll see the controversy die down, we'll see a changed condition in Waikiki, and hopefully in other commercial areas around our island. One more question for Acting Major Matt. Um, you know, the borders of the Waikiki-Sitlai Bill, mm -hmm. Kapahulu Avenue and Alawai Canal, 
does HPD anticipate a big movement of folks just outside of those borders? For instance, Kapiolani Park is right across Kapulu Avenue. That's part one of the question. And part two, um, will you folks then be enforcing the other laws that currently exist regarding sidewalks and, and uh, parks uh, a little bit more in those areas when this kicks in? Okay, well, for, for answer your first question. I don't know where they'll be moving to. I mean, that's, you can anticipate that. I really don't know. And talk about enforcement. We do already currently enforce park closure and park rules in other districts. And just to clarify, the other bills are enforced by DFM, the sidewalk. And the, oh, the, you're talking about yeah, SNLs and about. SPOs? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so they're enforcing park closures. That's, we enforce yeah. park closure, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but Gordon, to get your point, I mean, will people move? Uh, that's always a question, and, I, and to say they won't move, I think we know that some will move. But as you know, we do have a sidewalk nuisance and stored property ordinance. We're enforcing those every single day. Um, and you see changed habits in, in critical places, but now even on Kalakaua, as you go up Kalakaua, outside of Waikiki, on the left-hand side as you head Mauka, we had a, I think, uh, people sleeping there. And we've gone back repeatedly and they're not, they weren't there the last time I went by earlier this week. So, but the point is we're gonna to continue to use those laws too. None of these are gonna solve everything. And you're not gonna see any people living on the sides of, in parks. And we're gonna use different tools in different areas that are most effective. But we believe this tool is a crucial part of it. And then providing housing. The end of the day is permanent supportive housing, which we're working to move forward on. So we're going to go where they move, and if we have a law that will allow us to get them to move into a shelter and permanent supportive housing, we'll enforce it there too. Okay. One other question there. One of the things that you guys have talked about is, of course, we're all very hopeful that people will voluntarily move along and that there won't be a need for a citation and ultimately an arrest. What are the plans for where these individuals will go? Um, especially since we've heard time and time again from Ted Sakai with DPS that, you know, OCCC is already very overcrowded and that a large percentage of their inmate population actually are homeless individuals. And especially how that ties into them now having a criminal record and having to go through our criminal justice system when the ultimate goal is permanent supportive housing upon which many of those requirements are not having any sort of criminal background. So. Walk me through this. Yeah. So, so number one, um, as I mentioned, there is sufficient shelter space on any given night for most of the folks in Waikiki who are on our sidewalks and streets to move into a shelter. And our hope is that through a, through a warning itself, they will change what they do. Many people follow the laws, even the homeless follow laws. They go to where they're permitted to go. They're on our sidewalks right now because there's no law that prohibits them from being there. So it, they, like all of us, respond to the laws that are in place. And now that there's a new law in place, my hope is that they will follow that law and seek shelter. My goal, and if you talk to the shelter providers, folks like Connie Mitchell, they've actually said our compassionate disruption has increased the number of people moving into shelters. So number one, I hope we don't arrest many people. And I think, Major Man, you don't want to arrest many people. They're hoping that the warning and a citation will change it. We're hoping that when they call these numbers, providers will come out and pick folks up and get them into a shelter. And we're working very hard to roll out our $42 million of Housing First money um, to get permanent supportive housing for these folks. So I'm not assuming worst case scenario. I'm hoping for the best case scenario, that very few will be arrested and that people will move off the sidewalks in Waikiki and as the bill, and no, another bill comes forward in other commercial areas and more people will move in the shelter. And we'll have to check with those shelter providers to see if there is an uptick. We have vacancies. It's money that's not being used effectively. We want to fill those vacancies with folks should, who shouldn't be on our sidewalks and should be in a shelter. Since you mentioned that other bill, are you at this point then suggesting that you're inclined to sign that bill? Yes, I am. So this is Bill 48 that applies right now to a number of commercial areas around the island. Um, e. Kaika Anderson and others are talking about applying it to other more commercial areas, and I said I'm open to that. As long as we can define it specifically and it's where there's a lot of people walking. And if we can do that, I will support this bill. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very much interested in following it and sat down with uh, Councilmember Member Kaika Anderson and Ron Lenore, Council Member Ron Lenore, to talk about this bill. Sure.
Oh, wait, okay. hang on, I'm going to just finish up and then I'll, I'm sorry, he kind of jumped in, he's being rude, this guy, but <laughs> no, no, go ahead, Gordon. No, you want to finish up? Yeah. Do, do, your, uh, do your attorneys think this is going to pass constitutional muster before you? They, I've asked them in the version that it now sits, they believe it's defendable. We'll have to see what the final version looks like and it will go through a thorough review before it comes up to, to me for signature. Sorry, no, I guess apologize I was just for to that. No, no, go ahead. Okay, to just the impact again. Are you guys in discussions with the potential that this could have if, as it applies to should arrests need to be made, where those people will eventually go since there have already been so many concerns raised that, you know, our community correctional facilities are essentially warehousing homeless people already? Again, as, as I say, the goal is not to put more people into prison. The goal is to put more people in the shelter. And I believe these bills will allow us to put more people in the shelter, not prison. Okay, so thank you. So, on uh, Malika's question, I mean, is uh, Housing First prevent people with criminal records from, from getting into a unit? Housing First, no, will allow people with, with criminal records. And I don't know if, if Ember's here still. I don't know where she went. She's not here. But it, it, I think it allows people to move into shelter with their addictions, their mental illness, and their records. It, it, otherwise, we're not dealing with the most severe part of the problem. And it's working with these people who need the help the most to get back. And that's why when we talk about housing first, it's not for everyone. It's for a certain category of, of, of homeless individuals. There are others who will move right into other types of shelter space. And then, uh, can you update us on the time frame for the team match out of Cyan Island? Uh, any um, as far as the time frame? When that's Peter, you want to jump in on that? Thanks. You know, Peter Hirai, right? Yeah. Uh, Deputy Director of... Hi, Deputy yeah. Director for Emergency Management, Peter Hirai. There's no hurricane, so don't panic. Okay. <laughs> our transition center, we're still looking at two or three months of opening. Of course, we're still performing our due diligence now that the Board of Nat Land and Natural Resources has granted us the rent, right of entry. We are going to do our due diligence, make sure that we do all the studies and all the research that we need so that it can become a safe and secure place. How soon do you expect to get okay from DOH to proceed with further work? We're, we're going to be meeting with DOH. We, I don't want to speculate on what, they, what they're going to say, but our bottom line is the safety. Definitely to provide a safe and secure place to transition to the Housing First program. Okay, other questions? We'll hang around question for individual for, questions. Question for the, the Waikiki oh. folks. Um, you know, you folks mentioned a few weeks ago as this bill was, was reaching its, its boiling point that uh, you folks were going to start a new effort to raise a whole bunch more money to, to, to dedicate to, to uh, sidewalk and, and homeless issues. What is the status of that at this point? And at what point do you folks intend to actually spend some money to, to, to add to, to what's going on here? Well, the discussions are, are ongoing. Uh, meetings are still taking place, and they're determining the best way to, to go about raising these funds. And, uh, the, but the target is to try and get the program up and running by January 1st. So Bill 42 is the Waikiki sit lie. Bill 43 is Waikiki urination and defecation. And Bill 46 is urination and defecation island wide. Kind of, was this your bill? Yes. Okay, so this is the Kaika's bill. These two bills are Waikiki's bills. That's <laughs> that. The, Waik the Waikiki folks from Paul to George to Rick. Okay, sign them. individually we'll hang around if you guys could all wait a few minutes thanks